Hi YouTube, today we're going to be looking at a Colt. I did a previous video on this where I scanned over it and everything, showed some real close-ups of it. Got a lot of questions on it, so I figured we'd talk about it today. This is a Series 70 Colt Gold Cup National Match. It's chambered in 45 ACP and it's absolutely one of my favorite 1911s that I have. So, a little background on these things. Colt started making the Gold Cup National Match in 1957. It didn't say Gold Cup or anything on it. And um, in 1970, they changed it to where it would say Gold Cup National Match right on the side of it. And they continued to make this gun until 1983. Now, there's a couple differences here and there and everything. And I'm going to try and go through as many of them as I can. So, this particular model, the Series 70 one, many people think that the Series 70 means that it doesn't have a firing pin block. And they're correct. But that's not really what makes a series 70 a series 70 what makes a series 70 a series 70 is this bushing right here and i'm not going to break it down because it's a little hard to do that on camera and everything but this bushing here the barrel bushing has little fingers that grip the um, barrel inside of it it's called a collet bushing and what they did is they added that bushing to it, it tightens the barrel up for accuracy. And there's been a lot of rumors going around and everything that says those things break. I've never had one break. I've owned several of them in my lifetime. I've never had one break on it or anything. This one still has the collet bushing in it. So anyway, the difference in the um Gold Cup National Match versus a regular 1911 is this is when they really started customizing 1911s. So this gun, start off with, has serrations on the front strap. The serrations are to help out with the grip due to the recoil of the 45 ACP. It has an adjustable over travel on the trigger has a national match barrel on it. It has serrations on the top of the barrel or the top of the slide here to help cut down on the glare. It has adjustable target sides, Ellison target sides are adjustable for windage and elevation. You can see on each side they have click adjustments on them for each one. Now these guns were 100% hand fit. Each frame and slide was hand picked by the gunsmith putting it together. And they hand fit the slide to the frame and then they hand fit the barrel into the gun on every single gun. So if something was to go wrong with uh, 1911, you can't just take a part from another 1911 and think you're just gonna insert it into this gun. It's not gonna happen. Usually a gunsmith has to do it, or you have to be a pretty skilled person to sit there and hand fit the stuff into it. But these guns were ahead of their time. This is what Colt was trying to do back in the 60s and the 70s. They, um, they tried to um, make these custom guns sort of kind of like... Um, Wilson Combat, Nighthawk Customs, and Ed Brown, and all that does today. This was the custom gun you got in the 60s and the 70s. Now, the 70s models, there's a couple little differences here. This particular one here was made in 1976. When they first started making the Series 71, the roll marks were a lot bigger. It takes up like the whole side of the slide. Some people are repulsed by that. I think it looks cool. In 1980, they made these all the way to 1983, and that's when they came out with the Series 80. 
um, guns that had the firing pin block in them. And I'm not going to get too much into that in this video. But in 1980, the roll marks became a little bit, a little bit smaller on the um, side of the gun, and the finish wasn't quite as lustrous as this one is. It wasn't quite as shiny, but essentially it was the same gun. They just didn't pay quite as much attention to detail. But these guns have a lowered ejection port. It's flare. They have a national match barrel in them. It's marked on the top of it. See if we can get it to show up on the camera. I don't know if it will. But on top of the camera, it says, it says Colt National Match Mark IV Series 70 right on top. It has a flat mainspring housing. It just has a regular A1 style beaver tail on it. And um, it doesn't have like what the new modern guns have with the memory hump on it. But it does provide a little bit of protection from the hammer when you're firing it. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. This gun is so accurate. It works so smooth. Just this, the slide moves back on this gun so smooth. You can tell there was a lot of attention to detail paid in this thing when it was put together. The trigger is amazing on this thing. I mean, just there's that much take up and then it breaks just like that um, they're just gorgeous they're very collectible for people that like to lock things away and not use them I'm not that guy it does get a lot of fingerprints on them because I'm not going to handle it without white gloves on as you know from looking at any of my other videos I handle stuff they get fingerprints on them you can just wipe them off but yeah these guns are pretty amazing they're very, very, very accurate. Usually you can pick one of these guns up for around $1,500. That's what, that's usually about what they cost. Now there are wing nuts out there that have two and $3,000 written on them and they're hoping for a sucker. But trust me guys, they can be bought for about $1,500. That's what, that's what you should expect to pay for something like this. Don't ever pay for something because it has a four-letter word on it. They are available for $1,500. Now, Colt did re-release these like in the modern times, and they're very similar to these. The trigger will be a little bit different looking on it. They'll have three holes in them. The sight's going to be a little bit different on it. Um... They're not going to have the, um, the collet bushing in the end of it, but the grips are a little bit different. They're like the double diamond grips, but basically it is a Series 70 Gold Cup National Match. You can, I believe you can still buy that gun, and they're right around 1200 bucks. I think I'd rather have the older one here because of the finish is just amazing on these. I haven't seen anybody any other manufacturer that could um, duplicate Colt's bluing from this time era. Any imperfections you see in this thing, it's just the oil and stuff, fingerprints on it, but it's like a mirror on the sides and then the round, rounded areas right here are all matte and everything. The top is matte to cut down on glare and everything, but it is, it is a pretty awesome gun. And if you're looking in for a really nice 1911, I mean, you could take this thing to a competition today and it would absolutely keep up with any of these high dollar custom 1911s that they have out today. This thing would hold its own. It, it shoots more accurate than I'll ever be able to do and most average shooters will ever be able to do. But Anyway, it's one of my favorites. I'm a big Colt fan. We'll go over one day about the Colt Firearms Company and some of the problems that's come about with them and where they are today and all that. But I like Colts. I have quite a few of them. And this is one of my favorite ones. Um, there's another video, like I mentioned earlier, that I just scan over and show a lot of the close-ups of it and everything. I just thought we'd talk about it a little bit. It's not, there's not really a lot to say. 
Just they made the series 71 from 1970 to 1983. But if you have any questions on it, I mean, feel free to ask. As always, I'll do my best to answer it. I know a lot of people were requesting that I talk about this gun a little bit and here she is in all her beauty all right you folks have a great day i appreciate you watching my video and let me know if there's anything else you see in any other videos you'd like me to go over and i will be glad to do it thank you for watching